Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And on today's Going In Raw News Brief, we're going to be talking about Rusev's limp dick. Also, are the four horsemen nearing a return? But first, Larson, we might have heard that the Undisputed Era might be undisputed no more. What's in the news? Well, this is potentially heavy spoiler territory here. Uh, nonetheless, let's proceed with that warning. So according to PW Insider's Mike Johnson, we could soon see the end of the Undisputed Era as we know it. Johnson reports that Adam Cole Bebe is, quote, being shifted into a babyface role for the brand and that Kyle O'Reilly will, quote, also shift into a full-fledged babyface going forward. But what about Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish? Johnson adds that they, quote, are not slated to follow, so it will be interesting to see where WWE NXT goes with the faction and how they will be presented going forward. Uh, now, we speculated on uh, today's NXT uh, recap about is this Kyle O'Reilly title opportunity? Is this just a loose end they're tying up uh, to send Undisputed Air on to the main roster? Or is this the start of a larger story within uh, the UE to keep them in NXT? Uh, if Mike Johnson here is to be believed, it's going to be the latter. Um, uh, I think a, a feud between two halves of the Undisputed Era could be a lot of fun. Yeah, this could be a lot of fun. And unless, so one of my predictions, just because I have a gut feeling it probably won't happen, one of my predictions for uh, the upcoming WWE draft is that Adam Cole would be drafted to either Raw or SmackDown without the rest of the Undisputed Era. Um, it does feel, though, this past week's episode of NXT, given how pronounced... Adam Cole's babyface turn was, you know, I mean, he basically did every, there's like a list of things to do and he did them all, um, supported his friend, uh, uh, got a clean win over a bad guy, um, uh, expressed appreciation for friends, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, didn't, didn't, didn't have any selfish, uh, expression for, uh, going after the title himself. It does seem like they have something planned there. Now, conspicuously absent from uh, the episode this week was Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish. They showed up in the video package just as B-roll, basically, which is just footage. They, they weren't interviewed for it, which uh, was noticeable, as you, as you noticed. Um, so, I mean, uh, uh, could we see something? Yeah, maybe. Last time we saw Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong interact, he was preventing them from beating down on the diminutive Drake Maverick. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I, you know, it, w I am kind of curious, will Triple H, has he, has he received assurances that Adam Cole's not going to be drafted um, out from under a potential story? That's kind of a thing. They're doing a draft. You know, there, there, there might be... Uh, some complications there. Uh, that being said, if, if Adam Cole stays put, if Kyle O'Reilly stays put, uh, this could be the kickoff of a big story between all four of these guys. They've been there for three years. This is the only thing that's left for them to do. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, across the board in agreement. Uh, if they're going to stick around in NXT, as much as it might pain me to see a, a split in the Undisputed Era because they are so great together, uh, I'd rather see that a story uh, involving that, that them just kind of spin their wheels for a while and just not really do anything of consequence. So yeah. uh, if they're involved in doing something that feels uh, important and they're telling a good story, that's kind of the most important thing. This isn't 2018 anymore. My stance on them breaking up uh, has pr pretty much disappeared. Uh, I'd be totally fine if they did it, if there was a really good story involved, uh, you know, with plenty of great takeover matches. Uh, I'd be all about that. Uh, moving on from Mike Johnson to Limp Johnson, let's talk about <laughs> Rusev Larson. All right, A plus segue there. Good job. <laughs> I even job. wrote. I even wrote it down when I thought oh, of it. Oh, good. You wrote it down. It wasn't a spur of the moment thing. <laughs> all right. Good. good. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about this. Rusev was this part of the Chris Van Vliet interview? No, this was on AEW Unrestricted, oh, the official wow. AEW podcast. Yeah, I appreciate that. He's uh, he's he skipped the talk is Jericho route. 
and and went a different way to shoot hard on WWE. So yeah, like you said, the latest well, episode. Well, like of, it's, it's, he wanted to shoot hard because apparently WWE was uh, t- uh, telling him that he couldn't do that. He couldn't shoot wise. at all. He could, there's yes. nothing hard about what he could do. Uh, yes. Yeah. So he revealed the original plans for his story with Lana and Bobby Lashley transcripts come to you via Fightful, which I believe is sponsored by Blue Chew, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Here we go. He said this. They wanted Lana to say I was a sex addict, but the original pitch was that I had erectile dysfunction. They really wanted to kill me completely. I don't think in anybody's eyes how the baby face has erectile dysfunction that he's a good guy. There's no... (laughs) Oh, he continues... There's nothing wrong with people who have erectile dysfunction. I kind of disagree in that there is something. It's a dysfunction, so it's wrong. But then they get it fixed. He says people take care of it exactly. They can fix it, but that was not the case here. There is no coming back from it. Absolutely no coming back from it. I told them, Vince, this is going to bury me completely. He already had the man who took my wife. Then I have erectile dysfunction, a.k.a. limp dick, and I'm going to lose. I wasn't supposed to lose. That just changed with time. I said it was a better idea if we do the sex addict thing, and he went for it right away. Thank God I did not have limp dick as a character. I I, I, I sort of took some liberties with his actual quote there. He did. He did. He, did. he no never actually said limp Miro. dick. No, he did not. Uh, that was your editorializing, if you will. Correct. Um uh, I mean, everything about the story was already bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it's just a bad story. It's just I feel bad. like if anybody was supposed to have limp dick in any of those stories, it would have been Mike Bennett. He seemed perfectly willing to play the role of Cuck uh, in their <laughs> stories. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I wonder if even he would have said, limp dick, no thanks, uh, you know. Uh, Cuck, that, 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 there, that there is a step too far for my character. a step too bits. far. I'm fine watching... Uh, another man take liberties with my wife, uh, but uh, but you know I need to be uh, strong in the unders to appreciate maybe, it. Maybe maybe WWE was going to approach this as they'll have a, a character with ED and therefore get into the uh, get a, a national sponsorship deal. I could be, with, for example, hymns. Mm-hmm. Well, um, hymns exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that could that could have been a, a route they were taking to take a storyline and use that storyline uh, to gain a sponsorship. That Probably could be. not. We'll never know. But. We'll we'll never know. Uh, yeah, that'd have been that'd have been something else. See, uh, Mike Bennett pop some hymns, uh, and then you know uh, by and the then time pull like the f- an Iron Sheik mid match. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He's like, oh, let me get some hymns, and then he was like, no, honey, you have a match tonight. Oh, I thought you just meant we were gonna bang. Um, but no, uh, he had a match. No, he's out there. Sheet. He's out there and has someone in a, in a, in a hold. And sure enough, he's there. He's they're like, gorged. <laughs> you don't have any time. You have to keep those gray sweatpants on that you have that you're wearing. <laughs> and then everybody could see what the shape of his dickhead looks like. Uh, speaking of dickheads, the four horsemen might be coming back. AEW has been, they're all dicks, man. They're all jerks back in the day. All right, running enough. around, running roughshod all over the NWA. AEW has been dropping hints that the Four Horsemen may return to their promotion, and that return might be one step closer to happening because WrestleZone is reporting that the Enforcer, no, not Stevie Bradley, Arn Anderson, the original Enforcer, applied for the trademark for the Four Horsemen on September 27th, so days ago. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I didn't include the, the verbiage of the application, but as, as you would expect, Live wrestling, wrestling character, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it is, it is very, very clearly a trademark applied to the world of professional wrestling, sports entertainment. It still boggles my mind that this particular trademark is up for grabs. That is crazy. That is, I, I agree. That is really bizarre that WWE didn't trademark this or Ric Flair ages ago, ages ago. That is, that is absolutely bizarre. Um, but uh, I'm all about this, man. I think this would be rad. You get R and you get Telly. You get uh, uh, friggin' Hangman, FTR, and Sean Spears with the glove. That's a killer group right there. I think that'd be really terrific stuff. That could be. That yeah, could man. be. Who would be there eventually? Somebody would leave and be replaced with a Sid like character. Who would Sid, who would the character of Sid be played by? Man, there's only one Sid. I don't know if you could find another Sid. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He'd just bring back Sid. It would just be Sid. Bring right, him to the enough. group. 
That'd be good. Fair enough. Uh, Fair enough. So, yeah, anyways, who would you guys like to see in a new Four Horsemen group? I think that'd be great. Would you be interested in seeing limp dick storylines in the <laughs> WWE? Do you want to see the Undisputed Era stay together or break up? Let us know in the comments. Let's fill up those comments with your thoughts about Undisputed Era, Limp Dick, Four Horsemen. There you go. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, till next time, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Enjoy tons of bonus videos, including patron-only live shows, gameplay, and vintage 10 for the wins, access to podcast question threads, the friendo care package, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson.